And he will quiet you with his love, like a baby. You know, he will quiet you. Uh, that he will, you know, uh, sing. Uh, what do you call those baby songs? Lullaby. Uh, lullaby. <laughs> he will sing to you and quiet you so that you feel his love. You, you know. So uh, when I sing songs to Jesus, sometimes it's like lullaby. Oh, Jesus loves me. Hallelujah. It really gives me peace. And then it says in the last part, He will rejoice over you with singing. Have someone come to you and say, Oh, I'm so happy to see you. Have you seen someone seeing you and then sing over you? <laughs> I'm so happy, so happy. <laughs> now we don't see that. Because people just don't rejoice over us like that. But God said, Oh, I'm so happy to see you. God is so happy. So God will rejoice over us with singing. Can you <coughs> memorize that part? He will rejoice over you with singing. Right now, God is rejoicing over us. He's singing over us. He is happy when we hear God's word, when we listen to God's word, when the word of God is preached. He is very, very happy. So whenever I pray, I know God is very happy to hear me sing to Him. And we all can have strength from that. Yes, any time, even one day, we might be in prison for Jesus. Christians will be persecuted. But then you say, God is rejoicing over me. God is very happy for me. And God will keep me. God will protect me, even though I might suffer. But He will protect me. So I'm not afraid of imprisonment or torture, because I know God likes that. And God loves me all the time. This verse really helped me. Whenever I pray, I know that God is rejoicing over me. When I think about Him, I know God is rejoicing over me. And God is rejoicing over you now. Do you believe that? Yes. So God is really happy with you. If you live like that, if you live under the love of God all the time, what would that do to you? What would that do to your life? Make it better. Transform it. Yeah, transform our life and give us strength and motivation. And God will put, put compassion in your heart. Whenever God is there, He will put love and then He will put compassion. That you, when you see people, you just want to tell people about Jesus. Mm -hmm. When I wait for the bus to go to work now, I always, whenever possible, I tell people about Jesus. I just talked to someone on the bus. He rejected me, <laughs> but I still talk. I, I kept doing that because I want people to know Jesus. I, know, I want people to know God. And God wants us to have that compassion. When you have that compassion, then you're not afraid. And you find there is a joy. The joy is not in seeing people rejecting Jesus, but the joy is that I glorify God. And when I see one person turn to God, I say, wow, that's so great. Huh? I, I will rejoice greatly. But even when people don't accept Jesus, I still rejoice for God. And, and, I, and I hope that you will have that that compassion for the lost. And then also, when you love God very much, you will also have the anointing in praying for people. Mm -hmm. You know, right now in Florida, there is one pastor, Todd Benny. Yeah, Todd Benny. That there are so many miracles, and there are x-rays showing patient before and after, and there were seven persons rose from the dead. Mm -hmm. that those people went to the wow. meeting, have confidence, the thing about the meeting is that it's the anointing is transferred to the people who went to the meeting. And they went home and they prayed for people and people got healed. Many of these people got healed happened at home. Amen. And right here too, believe that it's gonna happen. It doesn't have to have taught Bentley. Of course it would be good to have him. But we can have that power too. Do you believe that? Yeah. If you if you just have faith, you can have that anointing for people to experience God. And not only do I want to pray for you, I want to also train you that you have confidence to pray for people. So tonight we'll first pray for you, I'll pray for you, but the next thing is, I will ask you to pray for each other, to open the heart. And the key to anointing is that you really believe God loves you. God is right here now, God remembers me. He never forgets me. He has great blessing for me and He is rejoicing over me with singing. That faith is very important. To believe that. That God really has favor on us. That I don't have to line up 
before millions of people to get that anointing. No. And don't think that some other people will get it before you. You can get the anointing tonight. So believe that. It's for you. And you can have that. Do you believe that? Amen. You can have that tonight. You can have the experience of God to transform your life tonight. I urge you so much because I've seen that happen. People just come with a humble heart, never experiencing anything. I've seen them experience the Holy Spirit stronger than many Christians. Because many Christians come to pray and say, oh, I don't know if I'll, God will come to me, I don't know what will happen to me. Or they say, oh, I cannot, I, I, I don't get used to that kind of prayer. But some non-Christians, when they want God, they experience God. I've seen that many times, even in public places. I pray for people in the hospital lobby. And the person experienced so great joy. He laughed in a lobby. Can you imagine that? Mm -hmm. For five minutes. Mm -hmm. And then he cried. She cried for 20 minutes. She didn't mind people walking by because she was so touched by the love of God, she cried. And she was transformed. And she dedicated, she dedicated her life to Jesus to serve God later. That God can do great things. If you don't mind what people think, don't mind what other people think about you, and what don't mind what they see. If you hunger for God, and you forsake your sin and say, I don't want any sin to block the blessing of God, because God is holy. The Holy Spirit doesn't like dirty, unrepentant people. We are, we are sinful, but if you ask Jesus to forgive you and say, Lord, I hate my sins because... My sins will take the blessing of God away. If you just say, Lord Jesus, please forgive me. I hate those sins. I dislike any, if I remember any of those sins, I hate them. You know, God did bring back the memories of my sins in the past. I, I have many sins too. But whenever I think of those sins, I will always say, I hate them. I'm really sorry I've committed these sins. Now, God wants you to do that. To hate those sins so that you won't do it again. So when you repent of your sins and really hunger for God and love God from the heart. Now to love God from the heart is very simple. It's also very difficult for some people if you don't have a simple heart. If you just say, Lord Jesus, I need you. Oh, Jesus, I need you. And don't think of other people and don't think of time. Don't say, oh. Pastor is praying for someone so I, I can relax now. I just watch what's happening. And, and I'd like you all to concentrate the prayer all the time. From beginning to end. Just open your heart. And you'll find the power of God come upon you. I've seen that happen in many meetings in Hong Kong. Even at certain time. Even when the pastor just say, Holy Spirit, come. And people experience the Holy Spirit right there. And so when you hunger for God from the heart, you learn that. I've trained people like this. First, open the heart to love God, to desire God. Keep doing that. And then the second step is to learn to do that, closing the eyes by walking and love God. And I ask the person, have you been able to do that? Have you felt the peace of God? And they say, yes. And then I tell them to open the eyes. And then love God. Is that possible? And they say, yes. And then I will ask them to say one, two, three, four, five, six, so say something. And then love God. Is it possible? And they say yes. So I train people to be able to love God while talking. Even when I'm talking to you now, I'm reaching my heart to God. And if you do that all the time, when you're sweeping the floor, when you're cleaning up, doing different things, when you're listening to sermon, open your heart to Jesus all the time. And then you find the peace of God, the love of God will come. Do you hunger for the love of God? Yes. Do you want to be used by God? Yes. Do you want a revival here? Yes. Now, if there are things that block Teen Challenge to be filled with the Holy Spirit, there could be. Because there could be interpersonal problems here. If there is any interpersonal problem here, ask God to forgive you and say, Lord, I'm willing to forgive. And I'm willing to ask the person to forgive me. And then God will forgive you. And then when people ask for repentance, the power of God will come strong, the presence of God will come strong.